I, it's a, I grew up in Great Falls, Montana, which was about 30 to 40,000 people. I was a good but really undistinguished student. But when I was 10 years old, I read a book called Microbe Hunters by Paul de Kroof. This was the story of the lives of scientists who discovered microbes, Pasteur, Robert Koch, and on and on. And that was absolutely thrilling to me. And I realized, even at that young age, that's what I wanted to do. The most important event, actually, probably of my life, was I found out from a friend <coughs> that a pathologist was doing research at the local hospital called the Montana Deaconess Hospital. And I was just between 15 and 16, and I went and asked for a job. Uh, for the coming summer, which was between my junior and senior year of high school, I said um, many things. He was partially deaf, had a thick German accent. His name was Ernst Eichwald. And it turned out um, that he was interested that I even asked him for a job. Uh, but I couldn't tell what was going on until I told him I'd work for nothing. Then he said, OK. I actually paid me 25 bucks a month. And I started as a mouse caretaker, but very rapidly. He would show me papers, and I would try to read them, primary papers, mainly about histocompatibility, tissue compatibility. The year before I started working with him, he had discovered in that remote non-university hospital, what's called the HY antigen, the first gene encoded by the Y chromosome known, and this encoded a transplantation antigen. So amongst these important things, while I was in the first couple weeks with him, he described transplantation genetics to me. And I got it right away. Genetics is actually pretty easy for me. And then he said, we had a problem when we were trying to transplant skin. We want, he wanted to use skin transplants in mice to determ determine the number of genes that encoded transplantation antigens between two strains of mice. George Snell had done it with tumor transplants. But because we knew there were not only strong differences between strains of mice or individual humans that would have rapid rejection times, there were others that were very weak and a growing tumor could overcome it. So he said that he wanted to repeat it with skin grafts. And the general method, I'm going to give you a little science now, is that between two pure strains of mice that are inbred, you make an F1, and the F1 expresses all of the codominant genes of both strains. And when Snell transplanted tumors from strain A or strain B to each other, they A to B, B to A, they were rejected. Transplanted them to the F1, they were accepted because the F1 had all of the genes that encoded transplant antigens and so the emerging field of tolerance and self and non-self uh, would dictate that they would be accepted. F1 back to parent, AB to A, AB to B, is rejected because of the foreign antigen. That's what he told me. He said, but in our inbred strain of C57 black mice, we got about a quarter rejections. Can you explain it? So he didn't tell me what it was. He made me explain it. And I thought about it for a minute, and I said it must be male to female, because the Y chromosome is the only difference in an inbred strain. And so and he said yes. And I realized then that you could actually think about a problem intellectually and then do an experiment to test whether it was right. So that really hooked me. Now. At that time, I was in high school. I was also his autopsy assistant. 
Um, this was the time of Billingham, Brent, and Medor. And I should say one more thing. Eichwald was not just a pathologist in a private hospital. He was the first, the founding editor of the journal Transplantation Bulletin, which became Transplantation, which is still the leading journal in the field. When I was just starting my first year of college, I was a founding member of the Transplantation Society. So Billingham, Brent, and Medawar had just published that they could transplant spleen or bone marrow cells from an adult strain A mouse into a 16-day fetal mouse. And when that mouse of a different strain, CBA, grew up, instead of rejecting A strain skin grafts like they should, they tolerated them. And they did not tolerate third-party grafts, say from C57 black or some other strain. So they had the concept that Burnett had predicted and others um, eventually tried to explain that the immune system during development somehow takes account of everything that is self and tolerates it. But sometime after birth, anything that is introduced that's foreign would be non-self and rejected. And that captured my attention. And even then, while I was in high school, I began doing experiments to try to understand, first, many things about this HY antigen. Was the Y chromosome antigen the same or different between strains of mice? Was it different between species? And I developed a sensitization assay of adult mice where I could see if the antigen was there, then a skin graft that was put on the back of a female mouse that had been sensitized with cells from the putative HY donor, it would, be, it would have accelerated rejection. But I was really interested in trying to induce transplant tolerance. And as I was doing it, I realized, and don't ask me where it came from, that sometime during embryonic and fetal development, which I barely knew, that the immune system had to develop. And that if you studied the cells that were developing and the mechanism of development, you would get at some really interesting stuff. I was as naive as that. I do remember, though, that in reading the papers by Billingham, Brent, and Medivar, when they did the A to CBA, they described that many of the animals were growing run up runted, smaller. And I had done, as a controls to some uh, male to female, I had done transplants across uh, generations, I mean, a species, and I saw the same thing. One of the most interesting things, though, at the time was that was the time that irradiation and bone marrow transplants for radiation, this is the 50s now, was starting to take hold. And I was seeing, if I did male to fetal female or male bone marrow to adult irradiated females, could I induce the specific tolerance in the adults by replacing the female immune system with the male's bone marrow. And in reading the papers, I got interested in that runting. So I wrote a letter, I still have it somewhere, to John Trenton, J.J. Trenton, who was then, I think, at the either the National Institute's Health or Baylor, and I said, is it possible that the immune cells of the donor were attacking the host? to cause the runting. And he sent me back a very nice letter saying that he had just discovered that. So again, I realized that by reading, you could have ideas and you could do experiments. Now when I said that I was not a distinguished student, I want to really emphasize that in case anybody who's in high school ever reads this. I don't think, well I was, uh, I graduated 41st out of a 
class of 360 at this very competitive high school in Great Falls, Montana. <laughs> um, I did score extremely well on the uh, SATs, and I was a National Merit Scholar, but I had no evidence that I could do well in school. And a lot of people say, oh, you must, must have been bored. No, it was hard. I mean, reading a lot, doing physics, all of that, that was hard for me. Now, I, you could, I could argue that maybe they weren't great teachers, because now when physicists tell me things, I, I can understand it. But what I learned very quickly, and especially in the field of biology, that what you learn from didactics had very little to do with how information was gained by experiment. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't care too much. I went away to Dartmouth College. I was accepted to Harvard, Johns Hopkins, and Dartmouth. And a lot of people, including Eichwald, convinced me that it would be better for a small town boy to go to a small place like Dartmouth. Uh, but Dartmouth, I found in my second year when you got to zoology and biology was ancient. I knew more about recent biology and genetics than the professors who were teaching me, at least in my field. I also hated the idea that as a Jew from the West, I was being classified as a Jew. And there was a lot of anti-Semitism at the time from the East people who grew up. And there was a lot of way over pro-Semitism by the Jews, so I was not socially in either of those groups.